if we could talk about some bills, um, there are a number of interesting bills moving to the legislature. Can we discuss some of your important bills for the 2012 session? <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of bills. Yeah. There are. You know, we have a hard time remembering the numbers. There's so many numbers. I can bring up one. There was a recent um, Senate Bill 2783. It was the OHA settlement. Mm. Ah, yes. and that affects a lot of people in Hawaii, if you guys could discuss yeah, that. Yeah, okay. Well, the OHA settlement, um, you know, the thing to set up up front is that it's settling claims from, what, November 3rd, 1978, or November 7th, 1978, until June 30th of this year. So it's only that short period of time, and it's settling those claims from the founding of OHA till the present. So it's not settling all the other claims that um, Native Hawaiians have. Or any future claims. Or any future claims, yeah. It's just that time period. And what it is, it's a, it's a settlement of land in Kaka'ako. Um, it's giving OHA ownership of land that the state currently owns. The rough estimation on the value is about $200 million. Um, and you know, OHA thinks it's a fair settlement. Uh, the administration thinks it's a fair settlement, so they came to us for ratification of that. And you know, the Senate uh, agreed and said, yes, we think so. The House uh, recently agreed and passed it out. What this does is it puts behind us this whole issue of the past, the past due for that period. It also gives OHA a land base which can be create income for them. That's the key part. If it creates income for them, then they can start doing the programs, helping the Native Hawaiians more, helping our people more, um, and putting in needed programs. You know, they spend about a million dollars a year renting their building where they're at. So if they move into Kakako, they can save that they can now bring in other Hawaiian agencies mm -hmm. to Kakako. The, one th the other thing is that, you know, the, the long shot for Hawaii, we're all trying for this, is right in the middle of all of the, the Oha lands is the proposed um, Obama Library. Uh -huh. So the Presidential Library, if Hawaii is chosen, it's between Hawaii and Illinois, will be right in the middle of the Oha lands. So if this happens, this becomes much more valuable mm -hmm. than it is now. So all in all, I think it's a fair settlement. And you know, it helps all of us move forward, Native Hawaiians, which means all of Hawaii moves, moves ahead. Exactly. And uh, we can now get to the work at hand, which is dealing with all the stuff that's before us and all the stuff that's to come. Sure. Well, you know, some people may say, well, what are the claims? What are the settlements? Well, a, a lot of the crown lands, the former crown lands, ceded lands, uh, that were really left in trust to the native peoples, or would have been if uh, the kingdom had continued, uh, are the site for schools and hospitals and the airport and a number of other um, public properties, but yet they're not deriving income for the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, which in turn provides programs for uh, native Hawaiians as well as uh, part Hawaiians. And so I think this is a way for us to uh, be responsible to our host culture and to make sure that there is a sustainable base for uh, revenue, for ensuring that the culture, the language, the practices continue to go forward because really that's what makes Hawaii unique. It is our host culture and we want to make sure that we can preserve and protect it. And to be really clear, you know, the, the settlement is on the fact that you know, when OHA was founded, they were supposed to get a percentage of the money. Right. So this is, was not paid during this time. So this settlement is to end those claims. It's nothing to do with the, um, you know, with the crown lands, the future of the crown lands, or changing the crown lands, or changing government lands. It's just the payments that were supposed to come to OHA. Maybe I could uh, talk about another bill that's sure. important to uh, Maui County, and that's uh, Senate Bill 2933. We're calling it our Ocean Safety Bill. You know, we had a couple of instances, one uh, off of uh, Ka'anapali and one in Lanai, where a swimmer uh, was run over by uh, a boat. Um, I know one of them perished, the other one did not. but. Uh, it was because we didn't have the appropriate buoys out there. We didn't have the lanes, the ingress, the egress, the swimming lanes marked out. Uh, and they were supposed to have been there, uh, but I'm told that sometimes the buoys, uh, uh, the chain goes away or somebody steals them or moves them or whatever, and we just had, they had not been replaced in a timely fashion. So this measure is to make sure that not only do those uh, areas uh, have their 
uh, lanes marked and protected and we have the upkeep but you know South Maui which is also part of my district is really growing in the number of ocean users a lot of swimmers a lot of paddle boarders canoers all kinds of folks and we need to make sure that the ocean is safe for all of the users and all can enjoy it and so we're uh, asking the legislature to provide some resources some dollars to get those lanes mapped uh, get them the buoys out there and and put up because we don't want to have any more accidents we've uh, just about got the ones in Ka'anapali taken care of and we're looking to do some uh, signage and some and some better delineation for Manelli Har Harbor as well interesting you know another bill is uh Senate Bill 2960, which, you know, it exempts uh, remote airports from landing fees. And the reason this is important is airports like Kalaupapa, Hana, mm -hmm. um, Lanai, Molokai, we don't have the traffic the, to carry passengers. And what this does is it's trying to encourage airlines to go there. So each airport has a landing fee. When every time they land, they have to pay so much. We're saying that if they can, we waive them or bring them, you know, discount them a lot. It'll encourage airlines to come in. And it's been working because uh, we have, for example, Mokulele has just announced that they're going to, Mokulele, by the way, is separated from Go. So wow. it's, it's a separate airline again. Oh. That, that's why there's a lot of confusion. It's no longer Go Mokulele, it's Mokulele, which is doing inter-island, neighbor island uh, flights. But they just announced flights uh, from Maui to Lanai and Lanai to Maui. Uh, they're Excellent. Gonna, they're going to start on April 15th. Um, other airlines are coming and asking about the routes to Hana and to come well on the big island between the islands. So, you know, Senate Bill 2960 is really pushing uh, airlines to take a look at the neighbor islands, take a look at our remote airports, and provide service to the rural areas that really, really need it. Now, you know, it's a bit um, controversial in that it forces the big airlines to uh, look at the small airports. Um, one of the techniques that we use in the legislature is what's called gut and replace. And, you know, when a bill like this moves to the House and they don't hear it, uh, we take a, send a House bill that has a similar title and put its con this contents into that. So they're doing that to our bills on that side on the House. We're doing it to their bills here. So Senate Bill 2960 um, may not get a hearing on the House side, but its contents will exist in a House bill. Crossover. So Right. That's right. It's a different it's form a different of crossover. Form of crossover. Yes. But you know, one of the other measures that uh, was a majority package overwhelmingly uh, passed by the Senate, and we hope the House will consider it favorably, is Senate Bill 2012. This is our Invest in Hawaii Act. You know, we have so many uh, facilities that are in need of many repairs, whether they're school facilities, other government buildings, our institutions of higher education, UH Maui College, our hospital, Maui Memorial, or other places that really need um, some electrical retrofits or other kinds of work on them. And we, and we know they need this repair and maintenance, but we've never had the money to do it. So this measure would appropriate $500 million in government obligation bonds to allow these much needed repairs to go forward. And the beauty of this is it would it put a lot of our small contractors, our small business folks back to work. It would put our tradespeople back to work, the carpenters, the electricians, the plumbers. Uh, it just would be a boost to the economy because the money that stays in Hawaii and circulates in Hawaii will give jobs and uh, an important feeling of self-worth to our idle so the main workers. goal of, of the bill really is to create jobs exactly. and to create economy. You know, we're trying to do the things that may seem small, but when you add them all up, it's big. It's half a billion dollars worth of stuff, and it spreads it out. So we're looking, we're looking at things that are ready to go, projects that were sort of sitting for a long time, small, medium-sized projects. We brought them all together, looked at them, and said, okay, let's put all of these and try and get the funding for it and get them going. So you know, when when this bill passes and it, when it goes up to the governor and gets his signature, they can start almost the next day. Mm -hmm. And the projects can begin because we're not waiting for design. We're not waiting for planning. It's been, it's ready to go. This is like a win-win for everybody. Exactly. You get jobs, the infrastructure gets fixed at the same time. Exactly. Excellent. I bill. mean, because there's not a school district or a school 
in the state of Hawaii that doesn't have some element of repair that needs to be done, whether it's a roof to be fixed, whether it's adding more uh, electrical capacity because of all of the computers and the new technology that's in, or maybe it just needs a fresh coat of paint. You know, all of the things that go into really making an important, uh, attractive learning environment for our keiki. So this bill yeah. will really help that. Exactly, and another aspect of this is the renewable energy side of mm -hmm. this bill because we're we're going to focus on that. So schools that are are you know with very high electric bills, if they put in a, a, a photovoltaic system, they should help all of us save a lot of money in their electric bills. And by the way, if the roof needs to be fixed to put that on, they're going to fix the roof and put the the system on there. So. You know, it's also investing in reducing our energy consumption, which should then help us save a lot of money over the long run. Absolutely, rest. because of the electric cost in all of state government are, are very high, and with the cost of oil going up, you know, it makes sense to do whatever conversions we can to solar, to PV, to wind. You know, that I mean, just to talk about this for a second, the cable bill. Yes. Um, because you know, we had the, the cable bill passed the, the Senate; it went to the House. Um, we put in a provision in there saying that uh, Molokai and Lanai can opt in if they want. I understand the House has taken that language out, mm. um, but they've replaced it with something that says, you know, basically, basically that uh, I, I think I didn't look at the. I'm not going to speculate because I'm not sure what they put in, but they took that language out, um, which means that the bill will go to a conference. So the Senate's position mm. will be, you know, we need to have something for to protect Molokai and Lanai. Mm. Um, but overall, we support the idea because, you know, like for instance, in my district, in Haiku especially, uh, the grid is, is full. So yes. we have too much renewables. And I have people calling me all the time saying, I want to put in a photovoltaic system, but the utility said we cannot because there's not enough um, firm power. If we had the cable, we would have the firm power of Oahu to back up all of the renewables that we want to do on Maui. So. You know, it's always been about us producing power on the neighbor islands, sending it to Oahu. It also allows Oahu to be the backup. And it should, you know, if it works the way uh, we understand it will, if we integrate the grids, it should, the net effect should be to lower the cost of per kilowatt hour on the neighbor islands. And you know, Maui is really becoming uh, the the pilot for a lot of renewable energies. I mean, we have wonderful wind farms. We have another one coming up up country. And so the challenge is going to be how can we so store that energy because we're actually going to be producing excess. So we have partnered with uh, uh, several companies from Japan that are going to be standing up electric vehicle chargers, some of the rapid chargers. They're also looking at a pilot project for Smart Grid to try to figure out how we can, uh, if one load is too heavy, how we can shift that off to another one. And I think it just gives us a lot of opportunity to really test some of the technologies and how best we can utilize uh, electric vehicles, uh, utilize wind and solar to power those uh, charging stations. And of course, by using uh, UH Maui College as one of our key partners, it gives us an opportunity to do the research and make sure that everything uh, goes uh, as it's supposed to and really has a positive impact and not a negative. 